Okay, that's me. These are my books. I've written two. They're on Amazon. Please read them. Okay, next. Um, okay, why do you want to write a novel? Well, you've got a story to tell, right? Well, you may not have a story. Okay, take a look at Dean Koontz. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story about him. Back in the early 60s, uh, he and I used to write. Now, this is before he'd written his first book. But he wanted to be a writer. He worked really, really hard at it. At the time, he wrote short stories. So he and I wrote back and forth for a couple of years till I graduated from college, and we just kind of lost track of each other. Next. Okay, hard work beats talent. And that's what Kuntz did. I'll show you that in a minute. He also wrote that How to Write Best-Selling Fiction. It's out of print, you can't get it, it's very expensive. But should you find one in a library or something, it's worth reading. Most books on how to write are awful. But there's a few good ones. Take a look at Amazon and read the reviews, and that'll tell you. Uh, Coates, first novel he wrote, actually the first two in 1968. The third in 1969, never published. The third was published. And since then, he's published hundreds of books. He works 10 to 11 hours a day. He works very hard. He thinks a lot about what he writes. Now, it's not so much that he works 10 or 11 hours a day. He needs that because he's not a very good writer. I don't really like his stuff, but I really do not begrudge his success. The man has worked for it. He has earned it, without a doubt. And a lot of people really like his stuff. Next. These are the first page of his books, the first page. Um, the two in red are books he wrote about writing, because he was thinking about writing. How do I write a good story? How do I write good fiction? The first four were never published. Next. The ones in bold are bestsellers. 20 years to get a bestseller. He worked really hard. Next. Uh, so how do you do that? You read a lot. You read, you have to read a lot. You read every day. You read stuff that you like. You read stuff that you don't like. You read stuff that's really bad and then you figure out why is it bad? Why didn't you like that? What was wrong with it? Figure it out. Uh, next. Not only read around, write. Write a lot. Write crap. Write stuff that you would never let anyone see. Write stuff that you kind of like. Show it to people that you trust. Really good stuff, show it to people that you don't trust. Right? All right, see that down there on the right, the yellow? That's Hemingway. That shows how easy writing is. It really is easy, right? All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. That's all you got to do. <laughs> so if you're not writing, if you're not reading, you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it at work. Yeah, I know. I know that's really hard. But you got to try. OK, next. Now, on the other hand, Lee Child lost his job in uh, television in 1997. He thought, gee, what should I do with my life now? Uh, maybe I should write a book. His first book sold. The next 23 books sold. He writes a book a year. By the way, uh, you should read the introduction to his first novel. You can get that on Amazon, I mean, his first novel. You can get it on an ebook, you know, on your computer or whatever. Read the introduction. It's, I'm gonna have some of it in the next slide, but it's worth thinking about. By the way, Jack Reacher, he was in a grocery store with his wife and they were shopping. 
He was trying to figure out what to do, decided to write. And this little lady says, Ex excuse me, young man, could you reach that thing up at the top of the shelf for me? He said, why, sure. He reached up and gave it to it. His wife said, there's your character name, Jack Reacher. <laughs> next, next please. Oh, there's his books. The ones in bold, if you can tell, are bestsellers. Okay, Dickens didn't write, this is what he said in Killing Floor, Dickens didn't write what people wanted, he wanted what people wanted. Write what you want. Don't write what you think people want. You'll never succeed that way. Write what you want. Characters, don't worry about the plot too much. Worry about the, the people in your book. Worry about your characters. People remember characters. They don't remember the plot so much. Ah, bandwagon. This is a problem we'll talk about in a little bit, but that can be deadly. Don't try to get on it, it's already gone. And don't try, don't try to build a huge backstory for your character and invest it all at once. Let him develop in your story. Next. Okay. John Grisham. Right. Big writer, right? First book, A Time to Kill. Good book, actually. Was, re was that actually rejected by, by most. Went around a few times. Finally, Winwood Press printed a few thousand copies. Then The Firm, Pelican Reef, and Client became bestsellers. So read A Time to Kill and read the Pelican Brief and see what the difference is. There's a big difference. Read those two and you'll tell. You can tell what makes a really engrossing story. Next. Okay, so reading books about how to write is worthwhile. Finding good ones is a little hard. That one up there by Leonard Bishop was the first one I found that I really, really liked. It's out of print, but you can get it used for just a few dollars. Read it, it's very good, very good. Uh, On Writing by Stephen King, not bad, but you know, I got a lot more out of his story, not the movie, the story, the book, Misery. You learn, you read, <laughs> you read what it means to be a writer from the story, and not from the book. Kathy Bates was great. But, you know, it wasn't that great a movie. None of Stephen King's movies were great, except for The Shining, right? Okay. Um, Write Good or Die is a bunch of people, which is worth re Read Elements of Style and follow it. Follow it. Do it that way. It's just a thin little thing. Been around for years. It's cheap, too. Next. <laughs> you know. They come and go. Don't worry about that too much. Don't worry about being a bestseller. Next. Okay, how do you write the stories? How do you do that, right? Uh, okay, so you want to write crap, write good stuff, just put stuff on paper. Uh, play with the title or, or don't. Do something. Try narrative hooks. Try, write something really bizarre or or not. Describe your, your spouse, your significant other. Describe someone that you know. Just a description. Write it. But first, you want to build some great characters. Think about it. Think about someone that is like Batman. Good and bad, right? As we all are. Write someone like that. Maybe someone who's flawed and can overcome those things. Next. Okay, this is really good. How do, you, how do you do it? So you start typing. Remember Shining? <laughs> All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Stacks and stacks of paper with just that. And there's Jack Nicholson. I love that movie. Okay, so right down here at the bottom. I saw this picture online somewhere. I don't even know where it came from. Maria bought a coffee. Maria bought an expensive coffee. It was for 
Fill it in. Write something. What was it for? What is she doing? Why is she buying that coffee? Why is it expensive? What is she going to do with it? Okay, that's a start, right? That's how you start it. Next. Okay, so here's a plot. There's, there's actually only a few real plots. Uh, our hero's falling into trouble. Oh no! There's the ups and downs of the story right there on the upper right. Uh, everything the character, yes, five minutes. Everything the character tries to do makes it worse. Complications make it worse. And then finally, affected by all this, the character goes through a big change and learns some truth. Hero with a Thousand Faces is worth reading, Joseph Campbell. He gave George Lucas what he needed to write Star Wars. Next. Complications. Uh, a logical outgrowth. Don't use coincidence unless you're Lee Child. And don't make your hero stupid. Next. That's a complication. I love this cartoon. New Yorker, right? Next. Uh, Fargo. That's not the same plot. What is that? You know, Coen Brothers, weird stuff. You know, we, uh, hard to say. There's her hero, Marge. But she didn't, wasn't in any trouble, and yet it's a great story, right? Next. Here's other stories that don't fit the plot. Uh, Fifth Element, Princess Bride, all of Sanford's novels, which are excellent. Uh, James Clavel's novels. Phil K. Dix, you know, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Uh, Blade Runner. Dune, others, next. Don't worry about the classics, next. Tom Wolfe, wrote Bonfire of the Vanities. He waited 11 years trying to write his next book. He wanted it to be as good as Bonfire, and it was just a copy of it. He jumped on his own bandwagon, and it really wasn't good. I am Charlotte Simmons. God, it made me cringe. It was awful. And Back to Blood, I haven't read it. Next. Okay. Takes everything you got all your energy, your focus, and you're gonna reread it a lot of times. And if there's something in there doesn't thrill you, fix it, because trust your instinct. Trust it. Next. This is good, Will Smith. What's the most rel relatable emotion in the story? What does he or she want? What does he or she, why does she or she want? What's going to happen if he or she doesn't get it? And what are the obstacles? Basics, right? Next. Technique. Keep your character voices separate, separate scenes. Break text between voices. Uh, read Stephen King. He's a master. You may not like his books, but he's a master at putting words on a page. Next. Spelling and grammar are really important. If you have a if you have enough, right enough, you'll, you'll figure it out. Be efficient with your words. And don't assume your reader will get it. You've got to tell your reader. Next. Show, don't tell. Look at that upper right. Isn't that a great picture? Um, show. Okay, next. Your characters need... Take a look in the upper right. That was from Rapunzel. I don't do backstory. Don't do backstory in your book. Only just a little, if absolutely necessary. Okay, next. I mean, you can do backstory yourself and write it, but don't include all that crap in your book. Uh, fried green tomatoes. Iggy and Buddy were, were, were inseparable. Buddy gets killed. Fanny Flagg told about it secondhand in the book. Second hand, you missed all the action. They fixed it in the movie, but I think she was afraid to show that. Next. Sympathetic characters, weaknesses, like, you know, you want someone like Batman, kinda. Uh, there's Chihiro, and Chihiro in Spirited Away. She undergoes a transition, watch that movie. 2002 uh, Oscar for Best Animated Feature, first 
foreign film ever to win that. Excellent movie, my favorite. Next. 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 Okay, avoid adverbs. Now that's a nit. They weaken your prose. Sometimes you can't avoid them. Look for good verbs. And then sometimes ad adjectives can even do that. Look for strong nouns. Next. Avoid very. Very is awful. You don't need it usually. Okay. Here's how you do, here's how you do dialect. Uh, Russian doesn't have articles. I went to ballet last night. Prima was excellent. Now, that's Russian, right? And yet it's words that are spelled correctly. A Texan, tell you what, Verge. Now, what is not spelled right? Tell you what, Verge. I damn well plan to set that man straight about my dog. Now, is that a Texan or what? You can do it without writing weird words. Next. You, there's actually several ways to tell a story. Okay. Next. Find a critique group. There's some here. Critters.org and NovelPro.com. Next. Don't worry about classes. I, I don't like them. Nah. Next. And it's not easy to sell. Don't expect it to be fast. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you.